Good morning and welcome to Amman Jordan, the backdrop and the host for the FIBA Women's Asia Cup 2021. It's day number two of group play. You're looking at Group A, Japan taking on New Zealand here inside Hamza, huh? I'm Despina Barton, my partner in crime, Siobhan Pryor, the former Brit national team player. This is what the full slate looks like for today. This is just the first matchup. Japan handily took care of India. New Zealand failed by 16 to Korea. We've got Japan, who is the Group A favorite, getting ready to take on what is coined the dark horse in New Zealand. A current look at that Group A standings here. And Siobhan, what stands out to you after day one as we head into this matchup? I mean, really, if we're looking at this game today, um, the biggest thing that stood out to me actually for the whole day was that coaches seem to be a little worried about rustiness because they hadn't played for so long. But in actual fact, teams played really, really, really well together. Teams gelled offensive, uh, offensively especially. I think the area that we saw a little bit of rustiness probably in from a team perspective was defense across the board. But really good day yesterday. And I think coach, coaching staff we're pretty pleased that uh, players weren't as rusty as they thought they might be in a sense of togetherness, not in a sense of individual performance. Japan, of course, is dominated in their first outing. Uh, they definitely won easily by 90 points, 136-96, and they just played their style of basketball, which was so impressive. Yeah, and that's what... Um, the coaches had said before the game that all they want to do is focus on the things that are important to them as a team. Um, one of them was offensive and defensive transition. I mean, their offensive transition was, was phenomenal. And of course, this is a team that is the silver medalist in Tokyo. They've got five returners who New Zealand have circled on their roster to slow down. Meanwhile, New Zealand, they came out, they knocked off the dust, and it was a competitive matchup against Korea. They ended up losing by 16. Yeah, and, and I think that was a shame because I don't think 16 points showed um, the true story of the game. I think New Zealand did get a little tired towards the end of the game, but, you know, a really good outing for them. And Panina Davidson had an unbelievable game. You know, she topped um, the leaderboard in, in so many things. She, 29 efficiency, 21 points, 11 rebounds. So I'm excited to watch her again today. And it will be a tall task that will be underway. Such an emotional and prideful moment as we now head to the national anthem for New Zealand.
Siobhan, quickly, can you tell us what that moment is like as a player when you hear your national anthem before competition? It's, it's amazing. Um, I waited a long time as a senior player to have that moment, and yeah, I cried. <laughs> a look here at the officiating crew. This is the first game of four today in day two of group action. Japan comes in ranked number eight in the FIBA World Ranking, New Zealand 36. And you can expect this matchup to get quite physical, different than both of these teams' first outings, especially for Japan, who went up against India. Yeah, I think this, you know, I think actually yesterday probably prepared New Zealand a little more for this game. Japan, um, you know, they're aware coach said that they're aware that it is going to be a more physical game than yesterday. New Zealand have some really strong players inside with Davidson, Purcell, but the guards also play really physical as well. Um, so it's going to be a real battle today. It's going to be one to, to look forward to. And we'll take a look now at those starting lineup that'll be coming at you for Japan. Japan, technically the visiting team here today in their dark red jerseys. And they are gonna stick to a consistent starting five. This is the exact unit that stepped on the court yesterday. Within that unit, it's Hayashi, Miyazaki, and Akaho, all a part, excuse me, and Okoe, all a part of that Olympic roster seven weeks ago in Tokyo. They are potent, they are fast, and they're gonna be stars studded. Yeah, they are, and they're not even, Miyashdi is not even on, there she is there, look, number 81. She's not even on that starting five, and yesterday was unbelievable with 27 points um, and 35 efficiency as well. So when you've got that coming off your bench, um, got to relax as a coach. Now for New Zealand, they did shake things up slightly. They swapped out a sister for a sister, so Instead of Crystal Ledger Walker, who started yesterday, the elder of the two, Charlize Ledger Walker, uh, the Washington State sophomore, will get the start in her sister's place at that shooting guard position. Then, of course, uh, Siobhan, you talked about uh, Pania Davidson at center, and then Kalani Purcell, the two that will be doing work for Guy Malloy down in the paint. And you, you spoke to Guy Malloy. What did he have as far as his impressions of Japan? Yeah, I mean, he, first of all, he was just, you know, really happy with yesterday, obviously not happy with the loss. Um, he was disappointed with that, but he was happy that um, offensively he saw some encouraging sights. Um, he was pleased with, uh, with a lot of other things, but I think the main thing that he was uh, talking about was they were not happy with their defense um, and defensive transition. Um, especially, and since they haven't had the chance to have a practice today because they are the first game, he said, who better to practice defensive transition against than Japan? And, you know, there is no one probably better in the world. If you're just joining us, you're watching the FIBA Women's Asia Cup. Eight of the top teams in Asia and the Oceania regions competing for a spot to the FIBA Women's World Cup 2022 qualifying tournament. Top four will earn a bid. And as you all know, the World Cup is the biggest women's international basketball event in the world. Japan right now, the favorites in Group A. And before this game even got started, it was so impressive to watch them with their resistance band training and added weight. They were working on body weight versus body weight and already preparing for that physicalness that will come from Guy Malloy's squad. Yeah, and I think that one thing that, I mean, I've just seen over the course of the next few days with Japan is that they're so focused on them and just them being the best in the world at certain areas of the game. And the approach from the coaching staff right there just shows how why they are. New Zealand wins the jump with Davidson in the circle. New Zealand in white, Japan in red. Cross court pass intercepted. Great hands by Akaho. And the finish coast to coast. A beauty to wake everybody up on this Tuesday morning.
start that you would want to turnovers in a row. Miyazaki will bring the ball up for Japan. An open look in the corner by Kaho. Off. Loose ball tracked down by Ledger Walker. And Ledger Walker was identified as one of the rising stars by Paul Nilsson heading into this tournament for FIBA. That's three on the bounce. Just a little miscommunication there. But yeah, she was. And, you know, until yesterday really hadn't really made her mark yet in the senior um, level. I still, she's got way more in the tank still, but she had a good game yesterday, 12 points, three rebounds. So she'll get more and more comfortable as the tournament gets on. Maudi takes it left. In and out as she hits the deck. We're moving with Ledger Walker. The Pac-12 freshman of the year. And she plays for Washington in the US. Davidson, high, low, action. And I know you saw it, Paul Voss caught an open look of Ashley's higher in the corner. She was, but uh, Miyazaki did a really good job. She recognized late, but there was a double here by Akaho, and you can see number 32, um, Miyazaki just dropped down and helped because the helper had gone across, so the secondary rotation was good, and that meant they couldn't kick it out to the corner. Three turnovers and a missed basket. New Zealand finds themselves down by five now. A beauty in the eye, Sake Hai Yashi. That is not the person that you want to allow to shoot open threes. Unbelievable three-point shooter, and she doesn't need much time, so you think you've not given her time. You have to give it even less. You have to be there on the catch. Japan against India had 24 made three-pointers. Yeah. Davidson takes it to the rack. There's a cap on top of that bucket so far for New Zealand. Two minutes in. Japan so disciplined there. He slipped off the hands of Mia, Miyazaki. Yeah, you don't see that often. One on one. And the approach is good for New Zealand, right? They're doing what they're supposed to. Yeah, I mean, they're doing exactly what they did yesterday. So, you know, we talked about obviously G2 Park not being there yesterday. Korea, so they want to look to get it inside, but really that's part of why New Zealand are good. That's one of the things they go to a lot, the inside game. So they're going to continue to push it in there. They're just showing a zone here on the baseline, out of bounds. Miyazaki calls the play. Open look on the corner. Akaho drills it. Yeah, I think that's the danger, especially when you play a 2-3 of, of shooters on the perimeter. They have to get out to those quicker. Akaho with five of the team's eight points. Herself. And usually the bigs aren't the ones dribbling things up. High low, Davidson gets the look she wants. Does it get off in time? It does. They count it. Yeah, that was good. They needed that to go down. Took almost three and a half minutes for New Zealand to get on the board. Nice creation, Hayashi off the dribble, it's a miss. She goes after the rebound. And a fresh 14 seconds for Japan. Elbow jumper, mid-range, it's a miss for Nakata. And Ledger Walker contested on every dribble. Yeah, she will be for the entire game. We saw that yesterday against India. Going to work in the paint. It was a good thought from Davidson. Jump stop, finish. No, it's off. Stepping out of bounds, trying to save the ball was Maudi. It was the right, right shot, just overcooked it slightly.
What stood out to me too, uh, as it, you know, they were continuing warm-ups here, Siobhan, the amount of staff that Japan has brought here to Amman, Jordan. I counted 10 folks, and I'm recounting on the bench here. And it was incredible compared to the stature of these other teams visiting. They are like a professional team. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, a lot of these teams, like at the elite level are, but there's a reason, you know, why they have an eighth world ranking. Um, they're really focused on every different area of the game. We saw it, like you said, when they were warming up using resistance band. They didn't use that same um, routine yesterday, and they did it because they know that it's going to be a physical game today. So just the attention to detail from the staff you know, you expect the players to give attention to detail. They have to give just the same, and they do that. And I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but Japan was a part of that 10 a.m. game yesterday. New Zealand had the 1 o'clock, so a little less time to recover here in the Group A play. Yeah, and it is um, it's a, a difficult time to play. It's a great drive uh, by Ledger Walker. The sister, older sister there. Crystal. Top tumble. That was a good stand, though. She was in the right place, right time. She stepped across to help set her feet in a car. Okoe, you can see, just runs right over her. Really good help defense. Bench like that one, too. They were all off their feet. Tessa Boagni on the floor will help with the press break here. Roger Walker surveys. We'll work around the horn. Look on the baseline. Looks good for Ledger Walker. Nothing but net. Yeah, really good start for Ledger Walker. It's funny how that works coming off yeah. the bench. <laughs> I was going to say, she was probably like, there you go, Charlize, I should have started. <laughs> a little friendly sister competition. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever play with a set of sisters? Yeah, I did. Um, Joe and Jennifer Leadham, Joe Leadham, being one of the most known names in European basketball, she was, uh, or is, a legend on our GB team. So, yeah, we were the same age growing up. And actually, on media day, it was really nice to see um, Charlize and her sister just having a good time talking, but they were fiercely, um, fiercely proud of each other. And uh, one of the really nice things that I talked to Crystal Ledger Walker about was um, she's really interested, uh, she's a big feminist, interested in women's equality, and uh, her sister Charlize had to give it a little, just a five minute interview for she's, um, Game. For her, yeah, no, her world, her rules, sorry. Oh. For, yeah, the FIBA, her world, her rules. And <laughs> she was, like, coaching Charlize through it. Like, these are the things you should say. You should say this. And it was just a really nice interaction between them. And uh, Charlize, Charlize just turned to me and said, you can see she's a feminist, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice. It was a really nice interaction. But with Crystal's leadership and guidance, not only to her sister, but on the court right now, it is New Zealand that has taken the lead. They trailed by as many as seven here in the first quarter. Now lead by one against the silver medalist squad, Japan. Yamamoto tried to feed the cutter. She'll get it back. Wink. And off the knee of New Zealand. No, they're going to say last touch by Japan. So two big defensive stops back to back for New Zealand. Yeah, really. And just like Japan expected, they are using their physicality against the speed of Japan, and it's working. Holding. Pratiana picks up a dribble. Three seconds to play with. Backdoor feed somehow finds the hands of Karatiana. They're still battling for it. Secured by Okoe. 
Japan in transition, flips through the baseline, finds the open shooter. This is what they do. A miss, but the putback on the weak side is good. I mean, that was like offensive transition to perfection, wasn't it? Mitchell Walker, corner. What, what a pass. How did she see that? What a pass by Crystal Ledger Walker and the three for Boagni in the corner. She just whipped that across everyone. I didn't even know she was going to pass it there. I didn't think it was going to make through through the passing lane. I thought she was trying to pass to the roller. Boagni as the lead. The new mom has her one year old son here, Noah. He's become a fan favorite and certainly a new family member of the New Zealand women's national team. She is definitely the star of the tournament so far. High low, really close together, but the connection is hot. Davidson this time. A really good positioning by Davidson. She used her body well to protect the ball. Three ball in. Beautiful take by Monique, Monika Okoe. She had five of those yesterday, 75%. So New Zealand want to stop her from being able to shoot those so open. Taking the lane, drawing the contact, right on cue, Mary Golding. She was someone I was really impressed with yesterday. She only had 13 minutes, but she was the one really that came on and gave them the spark in the second half to, to go on that little run against Korea. Seven points for her yesterday in those 13 minutes. The 25-year-old forward coming off the bench. She just has really high energy all the time, offensively and defensively. Five points for Mary Golding. <laughs> Open look, Maudi. Off back rim, battle in the paint. One and done. Great screen by Purcell there. Ledger Walker throws it up, weak side rebound, in and good, Tessa Boagni. Final minute of the first quarter, it's a tight one here. New Zealand with a five point lead. Akaho, floater. Back room doesn't drop. Golding will slow things down. Both sisters on the floor right now. <laughs> Crystal slips past her defender. We've got the floater and what a beauty it rolls in. What a game, what a game she is having. That is her sixth point in just five minutes. She already has two assists and one rebound. 10 seconds. Mia Zaki with the rock. For Japan, the feed on the cutter. Left is off. Maldi not able to complete the play. And after the first 10 minutes of action, surprisingly here for many, it is New Zealand up. 20 to 13, they trailed by seven here in the first quarter, but a lineup change paid out dividends as New Zealand settled in and really found a rhythm under the tutelage of Crystal Ledger Walker. And this is what those first quarter stats look like for you, Siobhan, break it down for me. Yeah, I mean, it, it's what you said, really. I mean, the stats do show it, but I think more so this is where you see in a basketball game that the stats don't show you everything. So it was something just didn't click in that first couple of minutes um, for New Zealand. You know, it could be anything. Like you said, it could have been the start 
it's the early start, we don't know. But um, as soon as they swapped in Crystal Ledger Walker, she just gave them a spark. You'll see some of her um, some of her plays in these best plays of the quarter replays. There's Hayashi with the three. Akaho with another. So Japan are continuing to shoot well from the three-point line. They already have five in the game. And this is one thing that they're, that New Zealand, you know, it's their bread and butter. They'll keep going to his Crystal Ledger Walker. They're going to keep putting the ball inside. They already have 12 points in the paint, and it's a good, it's a good space for them to be. They're very dominant inside. Another great pass by Ledger Walker to Davidson there. Great use of the body in the rim to protect the ball and go up strong. They also have uh, 16 points from their bench players at New Zealand, so they've got to be happy with the performance of those coming on and injecting that energy into the team, but a great start for them and a seven-point lead after the first. If you're just joining now, it's the start of the second quarter. We are in Amman, Jordan. This is Group A action between Japan and New Zealand. Japan walked in with a victory after day one against India and New Zealand. A loss against Korea. The dark horse versus the favorite you're looking at on the floor right now. I'm Justina Barton and of course my partner here today, Siobhan Fryer, the former Great Britain national team player. Roger Walker off the elbow. It's a good shot for her, that mid-range. How did she save that? <laughs> if she didn't, it was coming right at you, Siobhan. I was ready to shoot. <laughs> Yamamoto behind the screen. Great tip, away. great tip. We're running with Hippolyte. Predator comes through, actually tired, pulls back out. There's number two. This is what they like to do, Charlize Ledger Walker. Great job, points in the paint. One thing that we haven't seen so far from Japan, and I'm wondering why, I don't know why, but uh, Miyashita hasn't played a minute yet. And she was so good for them yesterday, 27 points. Maybe just keep an eye on that. Well, we hope uh, Toru Anzuka is just resting her and that she is healthy. But it is a long tournament, six days of competition. You only get one day off on Friday. Yep. Of the eight teams, we'll go three straight days of group play. Thursday, you'll see uh, a play-in for the semis. And yep. then also those, uh, uh, I'm gonna call them redistricting, but they're classification games as well. Yeah, it is. It is a super long tournament. So maybe we will see her. They might be saving her. That is a, a great pass. You know, a steal from a car how leads to another fast break bucket. That's what Coach Malloy wants to avoid. Davidson going to work, splitting defenders. A beautiful post move from Panina Davidson. She is getting more and more dominant. And she had a double-double yesterday, 21 points, she 11 did. board. Yeah, she was phenomenal yesterday. Taking it to the rack. No good, won't drop for Yamamoto. Yeah, Davidson's a really interesting character. I watched a podcast uh, that she was in the other day, and she makes clothes, she paints, she's really creative. and. She also leads um, a basketball club session with, it's called Mama's Ball. So they're all moms. So the all moms come and play and she like coaches and teaches them how to play and just allows them to have that little space from being a mom for five minutes. So yeah, she seems like a super well-rounded player. 
Panina Davidson. Yeah, 26 year old center for New Zealand. And this New Zealand squad is new to the, the Asia Cup in the region. They joined from the Oceania region in 2017. However, they, much like Australia, are looking for their first title here in the tournament. And they're going up against one of the toughest competition right now. Yeah, almost lost it there as well, Purcell. An ill-advised pass back to Crystal Ledger Walker, but they got it back. Do you just have to be aware of their turnovers though? Anyone that's playing against Japan does because they capitalize so well on, t on points from turnovers. So far, New Zealand able to keep the distance, still seven point separation. Three and a half minutes into the second. And talk about a payoff. Kalani <laughs> Purcell just stuck with it and she embraced that physicality. Yeah, they do, because that's what they're good at. Six points for her already. Open backdoor look on the weak side. Stephanie Maudi makes some pay. Tarakiana, cross court. Ledger Walker in trouble. So get it out of there. Oh, Shatira has a good enough look. Not particularly hitting well from outside either team. Make me She's wrong. Not gonna she miss. does. Hayashi <laughs> says in your face. She will not miss. That's her second three of the contest, but you know, it is very rare that you see Hayashi miss a three point shot. And the timing of it couldn't have been better as Japan needed a run. New Zealand calls a timeout here. I mean, one of the first things that uh, you see from Hayashi when you Google her name is um, a game that she played at the Olympic qualifying tournament this past, um, the past one where she hit eight threes in one game. She just caught fire. One of them was so deep. Now, when we're coming off dribble handoffs and mix, don't stop at the point of the Guy Malloy. What are you saying I'm just saying, continue to do what we're doing well, but be careful of what we're just seeing now. Just be careful of being sloppy with passes, because one of the things that New Zealand is really good at um, is turning turnovers into points and we don't we don't want to give them anything uh, extra you know we we want to make sure we take care of the ball get the shots that we want to get as they are they're not having trouble with that at all and I think just reminding them that you know being physical is really working for us so I know that's what they do anyway but just to continue with that talked about following some of these players on social media. If you're a fan of the game and you're watching this and want some more, you have to go check out the social media channels for this FIBA tournament. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, it's at FIBA Asia Cup. Women, photos, behind the scenes, interviews, press conferences. Uh, you get to really see the personalities of these women, not only as athletes, but as people and, and even some of their children. Guys, this is a family sport, so please. Follow along on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. A rare foul. I think it's been a pretty clean game as far as whistles go, Siobhan. Yeah, we've not actually seen, uh, I'm just trying to look here, but we've not actually seen a lot of fouls at all. Um, I remember a couple times where Mary Goulding was on the free throw line for New Zealand, but other than that, Maudi. Yeah, just the one for New Zealand and four for Japan. Pretty clean game. To say it's so physical, but you know, that is actually one of the things we talked about in Japan's game yesterday was they pressured the ball a lot, but they uh, they couldn't guard without fouling. They were they were oh, they didn't use their physicality well. Uh, but today, yeah, really physical game, but still within the rules of the game, so.
Crystal dribbling through traffic. Yeah, cut, a cut. Oh, she's gonna get charged for the foul there. Davidson just extended her arm. Yeah, here we see it again. You know, it's okay to have your bar arm, that's absolutely fine, but as soon as you extend it and it comes outside of your cylinder, you're gonna get called for a foul. Miyazaki, speed is off. Great defense there by Ledger Walker. Really good defense. In Japan, that's their sixth turnover too. So we were talking a little bit worrying about New Zealand, who do have eight, but Japan a little uncharacteristically not taking care of the ball here. Crystal with survey. Ledger Walker, eight seconds on the shot clock, goes left, gets the whistle. Will she get the drop? No. Yeah, she has been really aggressive in this game so far. Every time she gets the ball, she's looking to get in the paint. And one thing that we said again yesterday is watch when she's in the paint, her eyes are up, she's looking. She takes the shot because that's what's available to her. But she also sees uh, Karatiana is on the wing. She's really good at keeping her head up when she has the ball and picking out the right option. Seven points for, for Ledger Walker, leading the way for New Zealand and the Tall Ferns. And one of the keys Paul Nelson said for this Dark Horse team was they've got to control the tempo and play well on defense. Yeah. I think we're starting to see glimpses of that. Yeah, I definitely think, you know, they're controlling the tempo in this game really, really well. So, you know, Japan only have seven fast break points. It seems a lot, like we're not even finished the first half, but it isn't. Um, you know, for them, that's something that is their bread and butter, and I think they're doing really well, New Zealand, at stopping uh, Japan, they only have five points from turnovers as well, which is another area that Japan look to exploit. And I don't think we've talked about this yet, but Toru Anzuka, he was a previous assistant on the team, but there's been a lot of shakeup since the Olympics for this Japanese squad. New head coach, also their former coach there, Tom Pava, now is coaching the men's team. And we talked about just five members of that Olympic squad are here competing. Yeah, and you know, and one of the other things is that of those five, when you count up all of the points that Japan are missing, it's an average of 52 per game. So it's a big change. It's not that these, you know, other players can't step up and, uh, and, and play well for Japan. Like we said yesterday, Miyashiti had 27, um, Okoe, who, had minutes at Tokyo, but not as many as she did yesterday, had 24. So there are players that can step up for them. What a joy it is to be able to get some insight and be able to listen to these team huddles. And look at these young fans in the stands. Yeah, it looks like uh, maybe some uh, a young uh, military group or have been invited because they're all wearing the same Maybe they got out of class outfit. early, got yeah, to enjoy maybe. some basketball. Yeah, because we're, we're here in, in the city center, uh, but certainly uh, at Hamza Hall, which is just one of the athletic venues on this campus. Outside our door, there's a beautiful a swimming pool and aquatic center, tennis court, and I do want to say a school is nearby. Yeah. 
they are having a nice morning off of class, <laughs> it looks like. That was another three from Hayashi there. She's three of six. Turn and shoot. Go Nagni, yes! She surprises people. They leave her alone for a glimpse, and she'll take it to you. Well, you know, she can play really strong inside as well, but we saw in the game yesterday against Korea that they did spread, she did spread the floor. They did spread her out to give Davidson some room inside. Another takeaway. She didn't shoot so well yesterday, but she's showing us today that, you know, she can spread the floor. She's 100% three from three right now. Movement picking up for New Zealand. Ledger Walker, turn and shoot. Yes, she will, it's short. How much option there, I don't think. Miyazaki to the corner, zips it to Nakata. Again, I don't know if this looks, I know they're gonna head to the free throw line here. Yeah. Um, but for you, Siobhan, it seems like they're forcing more in the paint today. Or is that something that New Zealand is, is, is exploiting? Japan. It, it, Sorry, there yeah. It, yeah. I think, um, yeah, we see here. I think one thing that New Zealand are good at is help defense. So there's always a next person. So if a player gets beat, there's always another person coming to help. So they pack the paint a little bit more defensively than we saw India. So whereas that play against India would have been a drive, a, just a little dish and a wide open layup, that's not the case here because New Zealand are better at packing the paint and better at rotation defensively. Um, so I don't necessarily think they're doing more of that. I think it just looks like it because New Zealand are drawing attention to it because they're playing really good defense. And we're noticing that they're doing that because New Zealand is stopping them from being able to do that. Five points for Stephanie Maudi. And she'll take a breather, stepping back on the court is Monica Okoe, part of that Olympic team, and she had 24 points yesterday. It was really nice to see her. In the Olympics, she averaged 12, um, only 12 minutes, so it was so nice to see her get those minutes, and we thought that would happen with the lack of returners um, from Tokyo. And we thought that would happen, but um, just nice that she capitalized on the minutes that she was given. An unforced error against New Zealand, so they're going to take a timeout here to kind of really slow down. Maybe we'll get a microphone in there. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be able to hear what Coach Guy Malloy is going to say here. When we stop doing that, when there's a guy there, we just throw that. And the guard puts it, and now you can kick back to this guy. Remember our fours. You want to go as much as you can at the rim before you come out here for dribble handoff, right? Got the idea? Okay. So now we're going to go in mix. So we're looking at these last couple of plays. You can see Boagni in the corner. That was the last highlight for New Zealand while it's been. Japan has been able to inch closer here. It's a one-point ball game. Group A action. Yeah, thank you. Can you? Shots dropping. A whistle in to minutes, 20 seconds to play in the first half. Pace change up for Yamamoto, the feed on the cutter, the block from behind! Wow, Tessa Boagni! Yeah, she's having a really good game. Imposing her will all over the court, really, down low and on the perimeter. And then gets stripped there, falling asleep as Akaho will go coast to coast, a miss. The tip drill doesn't work. And it's secured by Charlize Ledger Walker. Yeah, Kahe with three steals already. Great defender. Cross court pass open is Paul Vost. It's short. And 
will have a jump ball, so it's going to stay here with New Zealand. And you just see Japan, they've raised the level of their defense, especially on the perimeter. Great pass here. And that's a beautiful block by Boagni. But yeah, you do just see they are raising uh, their defensive pressure. And although Ledger Walker did manage to kick to the corner, Japan, it was a wide open shot, but they took it early in the shot clock. And it's not always about steals, but Japan are trying to rush uh, New Zealand a little bit. Karatiana off the curl. A nice way to bounce back. Going straight at you, no hesitation there for Yamamoto. That's the three on three player. She competed for Japan in the Olympics on the three on three team. So just join the national team for this tournament. Yeah, she played well uh, yesterday. She had seven assists in the game against India. Davidson throws it away. Hayashi finish Akaho. Japan doing what we know they can do well. Kahe with seven points now. Paulo. Ledger Walker sticks the shoot, tipped away. Does she have enough time? No, Purcell tries. It's a shot clock violation. Yeah, that's four offenses now on the bounce where we've seen this raised level of intensity from Japan and New Zealand just can't seem to figure it out. They flip the switch and they're causing a frenzy here the last couple of moments in the second quarter. Japan has the lead 32-31 after trailing by seven at the start of the quarter. We've seen them smile a little bit more now. Yeah, there are, things are going well for them. You always have those times in basketball games. It's a cliche, but it really is a game of runs. And when the runs are in your favor, it's, it's a lot more relaxing. Hayashi there with three threes for her nine points. I want to say they had six fours and double digits yesterday. Half yeah. The roster. yeah, they do spread out their scoring well, and that's what makes them so, so hard to guard. There's threats everywhere on the floor. Uh, you know, even now, Akaho has uh, seven points, Hayashi nine, Nakada six, Akoe three, so, and uh, Stephanie Moli also has five, so they do spread the scoring out. Some Japan fans here <laughs> inside Hamza Hall. They are the four-time reigning champs of this tournament, too, by the way. So they are going for number five this year. The tall firms, though, causing them some trouble here on day number two. Yep. We still haven't seen Kiyomi Ashita, so I doubt we'll see her now for the game, but that's going to be a big loss for Japan. here that's going to go against Ashley Tyre. Playing Mahi Yamamoto very tightly. Yeah, they did have a foul to give. It's not necessarily a bad foul with just 15 seconds to go. Hayashi, the inbounder. Ball gets the point guard, Yamamoto. 10 seconds. Yamamoto, hard to see. Akoe takes it up strong. The hands were there. Shot clock expires. No basket. End of the quarter. So it is Japan who walks back to their locker room up by one, 32-31 over New Zealand. A turn of the tide here in the second quarter as Japan started to find a rhythm and really causing havoc on defense the final last moment. Yeah, so just a little look at the stats. Uh, Japan 31% from three isn't bad, but lower than what they, they can shoot. 
losing the rebound in battle by three to be expected. Assists 10, so <clears throat> they're moving, they're passing the ball well, but their assists were in the 20s against uh, India. Top scorers, Hayashi with nine, Akaho seven, Nakada six. So they really had a good push towards the end of the second quarter. Um, still on the stats, it looks a little in the balance of New Zealand's favor as they were leading for 13 minutes, but Japan now leading for six minutes of the game and that all came towards the end. So this is how they did it. Akaho with seven points for her team has played really well today. Davidson was really dominant as well for New Zealand early in the game. Got a little bit more quiet in that second uh, part of the first half. She still has six. Nice little finish from her there inside. Ledger Walker had a, a crystal, had a really good spurt there in the first quarter too. I think for Japan, they just really upped, they upped their defense, their defensive pressure. And whenever they do that, that just leads for good things on offense for them. Kohei, Okoe, excuse me, continuing to play well for Japan. She's one of two from three right now. But this is what they do so well, capitalize on turnovers and run the floor. Their transition offensively has been really good. Um, but coach guy Malloy, of New Zealand did talk about them being able to practice some of the things that they weren't happy with defensively um, when they played in their game against Korea from yesterday. And I think he'll be happy going into the locker room. There have been some fast break points from Japan. They've had nine, but that is lower than, a lot lower than we saw against uh, India, which is probably to be, uh, to be expected, but all credit to New Zealand, they're getting back in transition well. They're guarding the paint well. We see Bo Agni there with the monster block. So I think overall New Zealand have to be happy with that half and going into the locker room, you can see Hayashi Okohe, they're happy with the last few minutes of that second half for them too. Yeah, okay, let's take a time now to stop down and look at the top five plays from day number one. people only three points four points away from double digits oh the take of the left she's fearless Sweet. back work to the open shooter nagata just absolutely beautiful basketball you know the ball moved from side to side it went in and out Open look and up by Jazz Shelley. She hits it. That is what she does. She did it at Oregon. I'm sure she will do it in Nebraska. Automatic. Trying to shake off rolling. Having to force it up and throw it up. Does it count? <laughs> it does. It. Erting Chu closes out the first quarter of action with a buzzer beater for Taipei. Nowhere to go. Shot clock. <laughs> Amazing job to stay on her feet, Ponteja. Long time. We know how far we've gone, and we're sure of how far we can go. Unity is not just a word here. It's not just a spirit in this sport. It's the way we all move. We are proud of our art, country, family, language and culture. We are united by basketball.
Welcome to FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup 2022. Welcome back. It's halftime here inside Hamza Hall, Despina Bar and Siobhan Pryor. We're going to show you the top scorers here, starting with the visiting team, Japan. So top scorer for Japan is Hayashi. And of course, she's got that odd number score, nine points, because she is a three-point shooter. She's deadly from behind the arc. Three of six for 50%. And you just can't switch off when she's on the court. You have to know exactly where she is at all times. She hit one of them against the two, three zone. This one's in transition. So two of those times are difficult times to locate shooters. Um, one was on a zone and it was on a skip on the weak side. This one in transition. But you just have to run her off the three point line, make her put it on the floor. Because she is deadly from that range. A little bit of an unconventional uh, shot, but it works for her. And New Zealand actually has two top scorers, but they're going to go with Ledger Walker here for the highlights. Kar Karatiana also with seven. Yeah, and I think this is the this is the players to go to. Um, not only did she score well, three of five, but she just gave them such energy coming off of the bench. Um, she passed the ball really well as well so she has two assists right now um, but three rebounds too she's getting involved in in everything this is a beautiful little floater on the baseline for crystal ledger walker she's such a dangerous player because she's always got her head up she plays at her own pace as well so she's always ready to to make the next choice, the next decision. They'll need more of her in the second half. Stick around, third quarter action is on the way right now. It's a one point ball game at half, Japan leads. 